From the St. Louis Public Radio Newsroom, this is The Gateway. It's Tuesday, August 27th. I'm Abby Larico. The longtime arts center in Alton will likely be moving from their downtown location at the end of September for good. Their decision has raised some tensions in the Metro East community. There's a lot of feelings right now that I think are more about the building itself than are about the Jacoby Art Center. We'll explain what's led to the Art Center's departure and why some are worried about their future after the news on The Gateway. A St. Louis-based federal court of appeals ruled Monday that Missouri's Second Amendment Preservation Act is unconstitutional. In a suit the U.S. Department of Justice brought against the state of Missouri, a panel of judges ruled unanimously against the law, which invalidates some federal gun laws. This is the second time a federal court has struck down Missouri's Second Amendment Preservation Act since Republicans passed it in 2021. The law prohibited state and local police from cooperating with federal agents to enforce weapons registration and tracking laws. It also allowed citizens to sue police departments if they believed their Second Amendment rights were violated. Missouri Planned Parenthood affiliates are asking the state's Administrative Hearing Commission to decide whether a new law that keeps them from receiving Medicaid payments is unconstitutional. Planned Parenthood Great Rivers and Planned Parenthood Great Plains are filing complaints with the panel, which weighs in on regulatory disputes. The law goes into effect this week. It prohibits the state's Medicaid program from reimbursing any affiliate of an organization for care if it provides abortions. Great Rivers interim president Richard Muniz says that violates patient choice. You may disagree with those services, but federal law makes clear that if you are a qualified and willing provider, you can be a Medicaid provider. Officials from Missouri's Department of Social Services, which administers the state's Medicaid program, could not be reached for comment. The Manchester police chief is resigning at the end of the month following an internal personnel investigation that's had Chief Scott Will on administrative leave since mid-July. The city released a statement announcing the departure and its terms, which include paying out Will's salary and benefits through August 31st. Will and city leaders also agree not to speak negatively about the other party publicly. The statement does not include any further details about the independent investigation leading up to the agreement and states no further comment will be made. The only detail the city had provided previously is that the investigation does not concern the unauthorized use of the Regional Justice Information System, which is used by area departments to access information like vehicle registration and warrants. Manchester will now begin the search to hire a new police chief. A new law affecting how candidates can get on a ballot in Illinois will not affect anyone running for office this year. Alex Degman reports. Illinois Democrats passed a measure in May that prevents party leaders from slating candidates, in other words, putting them on the ballot after the primary election. The idea was to prevent so-called backroom deals that subvert the voters. But Republicans challenged it, saying Democrats can't change the rules in the middle of an election cycle. The Illinois Supreme Court late last week agreed and blocked the law for the rest of this year, but it's not thrown out entirely. Jay Keevan is a Republican slated to run for state representative in the Metro East area near St. Louis. He said in a statement that the high court's decision confirmed to him that the law was passed for, quote, purely political reasons. I'm Alex Dagman. Extreme heat has set into the region. The National Weather Service has issued a heat advisory for today. And remember, these high temperatures can be dangerous. 34 Missouri residents aged 11 months to 96 years died due to heat-related illness in 2023, according to the Missouri Department of Health and Senior Services. Heather Wall is the Director of Parenting Services at Lutheran Family and Children's Services of Missouri, a nonprofit focused on families. She says children are more sensitive to heat than adults. With little kids running around, they don't know that they're getting overheated or know that they're getting dehydrated. And so we just need to be very mindful of that, ask them to take breaks, ask them to come and get something to drink. Wall says as extremely hot days become more common, parents need to be on the lookout for signs of heat-related illness, such as flushing, vomiting, confusion, and heat rash. Several Midwestern states are encouraging older farmers to rent or sell their land to the next generation. Harvest Public Media's Hector Alejandro Arzate reports on the new tax incentive program in Missouri. 
Missouri has rolled out a new deduction for landowners who rent or sell to younger farmers in exchange for a break on their state taxes. Joe Lau, who farms outside of Kansas City, knows how hard it is to get started as a new farmer. He's excited to see how Missouri's new program will incentivize landowners to work with beginners. You know, I would just encourage those people with those resources, the landowners, to consider a young and beginning farmer when they go to rent, even if it wasn't just for the tax benefits, just the fact to get a little bit new blood into farming. Most Midwestern states, including Kansas and Illinois, have tax credit and loan programs aimed at helping younger farmers get started. For Harvest Public Media, I'm Hector Alejandro Arzate. In about a month, the longtime arts center in Alton will be moving from its current building, with no official plan to return. What's led to the departure of the Jacoby Arts Center from that building has some Metro East residents worried about what's to come. St. Louis Public Radio's Will Bauer reports on the uncertainty for a staple of downtown Alton. On the old creaky wood floors of the Jacoby Arts Center, board member Valerie Hoven is walking me through the historic you know, building. What's really interesting too, this building, so old, so beautiful. People would have weddings here before and... The Currently, the Arts Center uses the vast first floor and basement of the building. It stretches across an estimated 20,000 square feet, equipped with a large gallery, event space like you just heard, a clay kiln, a dark room, and more. But that will soon change. So the entire first floor, we would get a fraction of that, and none of the downstairs. Renovations on the old building will start this fall. The construction is financed by a prominent local attorney's economic development group called Alton Works. The attorney's name is John Simmons. He bought the building in 2018, and he did so at the request of the Art Center because everyday upkeep got expensive. While the renovations are needed, it has the Jacoby Art Center and some of its supporters worried. Here's why. Alton Works made a preliminary proposal for the art center to return after construction. It would only include about 2,500 square feet, and it would cost more than they're paying now. Currently, the Jacoby is paying about 1,500 per month for part of the building's utilities. Since 2018, Simmons has been covering the rest, an estimated $1 million. But getting a smaller space and paying more than they are now doesn't work for the nonprofit art center. They want to keep a large event space so they can rent it out and have studios for artists. Again, here's Hoven. For us to really meet the needs of the community and be sustainable, we need a space where we can offer some of those programs, the artist shop, and other spaces that offer some kind of income as well. Alton Works tried to help find other locations on a temporary and permanent basis. They own quite a few in downtown, but the two parties haven't found anything that works for the art center. Alton Works attorney Chad Brigham feels like his group took a proactive approach. We did put in a great deal of work behind the scenes in trying to find an interim solution. We really wanted to. We wanted to find a place for them to go where it was easy for them to continue programming, whether it's 100% of it or some portion of it that would work for them. Without a future in sight, the fear of losing the art center, in that building in particular, has raised tensions in the community. Some in town say Alton Works has good intentions, but hasn't executed, while others think that Jacoby hasn't planned well enough for the future. Hoven says the art center knew it would have to move temporarily. What they didn't know and plan for was moving permanently. There's a lot of feelings right now that I think are more about the building itself than are about the Jacoby Art Center. This situation is complex for both the Jacoby and Alton Works. Both think what the other organization is doing in the community is honorable and needed. For example, Alton Works is building some of the first housing in downtown in a generation. They hope to attract employers to town with new office space. One day, Alton Works also hopes to renovate the old theater in town. And John Simmons, the successful lawyer, is putting up a lot of his own cash to finance these projects. In total, the rehab of the Jacoby building will cost $20 million. Brigham, the attorney with Alton Works, says some of the rhetoric in town has been hurtful. But they remain committed to the Jacoby Art Center. I don't think there's ever been a question of our support of that organization, of our affinity for that organization. While some of the events were unfortunate, some of them were encouraging. The entire community rallied around the Jacoby Arts Center. That's a good thing. Exactly what's next is still being hashed out. There are no immediate plans after the end of September for the Jacoby. The board is hopeful and looking for some space to rent. 
they've organized a planning committee to evaluate their future. In Alton, I'm Will Bauer, St. Louis Public Radio. Our Fred Ehrlich edited that piece. The Gateway is a production of St. Louis Public Radio, a listener-supported service of the University of Missouri-St. Louis. Music by Ryan McNeely of Adult Fur. I'm Abby Larico, and from the St. Louis Public Radio Newsroom, this has been The Gateway. Thank you.